Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this, the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need? And he and his companions were hungry. How he went into the house of David, a house of God, when Abiathar was high priest, and ate the bread of offering that only the priest could lawfully eat, and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Hope. Hope, faith, and love. See the, the way the letter to the Hebrews are just wound these three together. God is not unjust. So God, this letter to the Hebrew is, is spoken to these Jews who were between the old priesthood and the new priesthood. Who were between the Judaic religion and the Christianity. You know, and they were some kind of, yeah, this old, the new, the tension in between. Are we on the right path or not? So the letter to the Hebrews is bringing them face to face. But he was encouraging them, first and foremost, because even though they were unsure of their path, they were still doing acts of love. So their faith is already showing some presence in action. And he said, <laughs> so, we earnestly desire each of you to demonstrate the same eagerness for the fulfillment of hope until the end. When John Paul was inaugurated Pope and he was elected Pope, you know, just at the balcony of St. Peter's, you know, he, he just came out and said, do not be afraid. The first words, the words that the angels also say, to the blessed man, do not be afraid. So every time, do not be afraid. Much more at this age, at this millennium, do not be afraid. There's so much fear around. There's so much fear. And we don't need it because we are children of God. We belong to God. And I tell you what, <laughs> The word of God testifies eloquently. Maybe I say a little bit why we are afraid. Why we are afraid is because we do not go to the word of God. Many of us utilize the social media as the means of enabling our faith rather than the word of God. And we don't take time. The social media is just, oh, I think I saw something good. <laughs> this is cool. That was nice. <laughs> How much more when we go to the word of God? When God made the promise to Abraham, Abraham was 75 years old. When God made the promise to him, you will bear a son, and your son shall, you know, at, as, at the end of the day, your son will be as numerous, your children will be as numerous as the stars of the heavens. Your children will be as numerous as the sand on the seashore at 75. And things were not going that way. But Abraham kept faith. He kept faith and looking forward. Guess what? 25 years. <laughs> 25 years. The guy was almost 100. <laughs> what does it for a man of 100? In, in, that, that's the end. He has come to the end. But that was when the Lord clicked 
go. Fulfillment. Now. And the wife initially was 65 when the promise was made. She was 90. When eventually this was to be set and clearly demonstrated the fulfillment of the promise. They saw three gentlemen under the tree in the hot sun. They invited them into their home and were hospitable to them. Faith. The action. Action of faith is love. When St. James says, by my love, I will show you my faith. He means, from my faith, you can see the action demonstrates faith. This was the time when they could be robbed. This was the time that anything could happen to him, to Abraham. He was old and the wife was old. If these young men just, you know, destroy their home and cut it away, you know, it was insecurity. But they put faith in God and were hospitable to them. They were hospitable to men. And they discovered, actually, they were hospitable to God. They were free. A sign of the first presence of the predisposition to the Trinity in the Old Testament. And God answered them. They had the son Isaac. And from Isaac, they had Jacob. You know, and that way continued, continued to the 12 tribes of Israel. Did God realize his promise? To Abraham? Of course he did. Between Abraham and the time of Jesus is 4,000 years. <laughs> and sometimes we cannot even wait one day. You know because we think the promises of God is just like instant coffee. Or just like drive through we may be used to drive through, even drive through communion, but that is not how it is. It's not that way, the click on the finger. No, it's not. If you have it today, all well and good. If not, wait <coughs> for the Lord. 4,000 years. <laughs> God had no one to swear by himself because men and women swear by someone who is higher than himself. But because he wanted to ratify, he wanted to show the immutability, the unchangeableness of his decree, of his promise. He swore by himself. He swore a oath by himself. He made a complete vow and ratified it in himself. He knew also that we could be fickle. He knew that we may need a guarantor. He knew that we need a witness. God witnessed to himself. I will bless you and multiply you. Yeah. It is impossible for God to lie. The unfortunate thing for humanity today is we do not search the unsearch, the, search, the, the unchangeable word of God. We do not. We're not studying the word of God. I said last Sunday, if you want to hide something from somebody today, just put it in their Bibles. They wouldn't find it. So how? How do we live that way? That is our identification. That is our DNA. That is our history. Today, even go to our Catholic schools, <laughs> I tell you what, oh boy, the force will be with you. What is that called? The force will be with you. Where is that from? Is it in the Bible? That is how you now have skepticism about what we call Catholic. Skepticism. We're not even sure. Because we don't even read the word of God. We don't meditate on it. We don't reflect on it. And I want to shock you. I have seen Bibles, Bible study groups that never read the Bible. I don't know whether we have some around us. 
There are Bible study groups, but they never, I mean never, read the Bible. They're reading novels, they're reading history books. What is making us afraid of plunging into the Word of God, if not the evil one? Who does not want us to know who, has, who we are? And who does not want to know the promises that the Father has given to us? Be not afraid. 365 times in the Bible. Be not afraid. Yeah, we say, yeah, be not. We hear it said, but where are they? I am the God that healed thee. I am your Redeemer. I know you. I have called you by name. You are mine. <laughs> Isaiah 43. You see, there, he does not change. That is the anchor of the soul. You know what that anchor does to a ship? When the whole place, when the thing, when there's turbulence in the sea, the anchor rocks, it just keeps it steady. Keeps it steady. That is what the word of God does for us. The anchor of our soul keeps us steady. Oh. What will happen? To a young man, a young woman, whose parents have left him or her one million dollar estate, but does not read the will, <laughs> has not read the will of his dead father, so does not know and lives all his life in poverty. Meanwhile, is a rich person. Do you get that analogy? That's what happens when we do not study the word of God. We are so rich, yet live so poor. Because we have not received that which has been given to us. We fail to read the document which has been given to us by God our Father. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The covenant never changes. The covenant is today. The covenant is tomorrow. The covenant continues to linger. You see, when you speak truth to a situation, people just say, wow, I never knew that. And the day you begin to know, the truth sets you free. You're free. Oh. I heard, you know, Father Schmitz, you know, has a Bible podcast in the and that is number one app, <laughs> number one in the whole of America. Don't you know how people are thirsty and hungry, thirsty for the word of God? I saw two ladies recently, about three weeks ago, and they were crying, they literally crying. They were up 60 and above. Father, we want to be fed. <laughs> we are not being fed. In our church, we want to be fair. They will cry. We have the nourishment in the word of God. Let us dive into it. Let us dive into it. The word is life. The word is life. It fills us every day. It fills us. We shouldn't be afraid. We should hold on to hope. But if we're not listening to hope, we listen to hopelessness. We listen to despair. And it's around us. Despair in the books that we read. Despair in the video games. Despair in the secular media. Which media is not even secular now? Tell me. <laughs> it's secular media. Which one is not secular? Their desire is to take us away from knowing who we are. Do you see how much people go, you know, to get their DNA? They want to identify who they are. People go extra lengths to go get DNA and pay and do all sorts of things. I know, oh, what? my last name, it looks this way, it looks from this side. Where does it? Because they don't want to be floating like a sheep that is thrown away in the sea. The word of God is that anchor. The word of God is the DNA that we have to root ourselves firmly. Let us not be tossed around. God the Father doesn't want us to be that way. He is our forerunner. He has gone ahead of us and is watching over us 
praying over us every second that we have access, we take time to study and digest and reflect and pray and, you know, the word of God and meditate on it so that we can truly discover who we are. Who we are. We are heirs of God's kingdom. We are princes and princesses. We have a place at the kingdom of God. The Lord is preparing a banquet for us. We have no reason to be poor. We have no reason to be victims. We are victors in the Lord. Let's hold on to the anchor of our soul. Let us rise and pray.